And welcome back, everybody. The state of chess.com, quarter one of the year 2020. Can we just give 2020 back? Anybody else into that? Can we just like send it back and skip? I might be into that. Um, the year 2020 rolls on, whether we like it or not, and uh, the quarter one coverage continues here, addressing not just some, some of the stuff we always do on this show, give you some updates, talk about product. We do usually get into at least one or two sensitive topics facing our community in that particular time, uh, at that particular time, in that particular quarter. Uh, but this, this episode, if you're just tuning in, got into some very sensitive stuff, uh, talking about cheating, uh, what we're doing about it as it relates to a number of different things. There's a reason we kind of stacked uh, the, the show the way we did, talking about the premium marina opportunities we're applying and, or, or providing everyone as a new premium perk. Um, and uh, the questions and worries that have come in about cheating and how it relates to that. We're going to get into some of it. Some of you asked it in chat. I've got them right here. The title player community and their worries about it uh, as games increase online. And then, of course, just what, we're, what we do in general. And, and um, our talk about that will, will, be, will be shared on, on our different digital media platforms. That's a fancy word for things like YouTube and Twitch and Facebook. You can see it later if you just tuned in or just watch the video on demand uh, on Twitch if, if you uh, are already a subscriber there. So... Um, on that note, it's time to break into the more the questions that were s surrounded or relating directly to this fair play talk. Uh, and um, some of them will open up doors of us talking a little more about the technical stuff as much as we can. And, um, and without any further ado, let's do it. So thank you to all that have been uh, asking interesting and intriguing and, and hard-hitting, challenging questions. So uh, fair play questions from Sizzle Biscuit says, what sort of appeal process will be in place for people who are flagged for cheating? So the, the appeal progress we already have in place will be the same process in place. So um, when you say will be, it's already in place. And that is that every single account close has the right to appeal uh, by emailing into uh, support. Title players are actually contacted directly with their closure. So they are actually given a private opportunity uh, before even the public knows about it, given their position and, and their, their accomplishments and often their influence in the chess community and the fact that they do a lot of good, despite maybe this one mistake, we give them that opportunity. But everyone can send in an email. You can live and, and give a, the most detailed appeal you want, explain things. Um, in the most rarest of cases, appeals have led to improvements to not just our algorithm, but our process. Sometimes it wasn't the algorithm's fault, but somebody who was on our team who was maybe new and misread something, right? Sometimes it has led to a, a, a massive breakthrough in terms of how we evaluated something that the, that the algorithm or the engines were telling us. So we encourage anyone who thinks they were cheated wrongly to appeal. Also know that a lot of appeals get declined. The first response is then to give us a, an explicitive proverbial uh, middle you know what and then often after a couple months later they come back and say you know what you were right I was angry I'm sorry uh, we've had some really interesting cases people saying things like I, I don't cheat on my wife I don't cheat on my taxes and I certainly don't cheat at chess that person admitted to cheating a few months later and um, so maybe he needs to have some tougher discussions in his life okay we move on Ross Wes asks, can I ask about sandbagging? I'm really glad you brought this up. Not just sandbagging in terms of the accounts, but a lot of people are commenting right now. I saw Gotham Chess. I'm not sure if it was related to premium arenas. I, we have another question coming up by, uh, let's see, member GTG Pro 2018 wants to talk about how sandbagging will be determined in premium arenas. So we're already doing that all the time. And obviously it's not the most common form you think of cheating. Usually it's engine cheating in terms of the masses that we close. Um, but we do also close people for sandbagging. It happens sometimes friend on friend action where they try to sandbag with each other. Uh, it does happen sometimes for non-cash prizes, but you know, our members are holding events all the time. You guys are an awesome community. You're holding your own club championships, your own daily chess events, your own live chess club championships. And we try to empower you to do that. And sometimes people cheat in your event for no reason. They just did, right? And you're upset about it or your, or your community members are in your club. And we get reports about that and we act on it, right? Uh, I would say the amount of auto detections we have for sandbagging is obviously less because the much greater part of our investment goes into the statistical um, measurements and, you know, the thresholds and algorithms that we're trying to establish with catching the most sophisticated forms of cheating, frankly, the more important ones. But we do act on sandbagging. And I'll say this. If anyone is caught having sandbagged over this last month, anybody put it this way. If you win a prize in a premium arena, you can know that you are going to be under massive scrutiny. And no one will actually get that cash out prize until we have reviewed their games in great detail. Not just the history of their account, 
but everything about them. So if you plan on winning a cash prize and you're not a clean playing premium member, good standing member of our community, you're probably not going to get that cash prize. And instead, you'll probably just expose yourself to some things that you were doing uh, in, in, in a shady way. So to answer your question, think about it this way. Not only can I make this promise to you, people have asked that, of course I can make this promise because we're not going to start paying people cash who are gaming you and us. So there's only a few cash prizes each week. Don't game the system because you're going to be caught. Um, let alone, even if you come close to winning, we'll probably catch you. So yeah, of course we are. For the premium arena, how do you plan to prevent people? Okay, this is the same sort of thing. Um, we're already monitoring it. We're monitoring um, the fact that once people play in this premium arena, we will be doing a check of what their rating has been for the last month. So if someone has gone from 1,600 to 1,100 in the last month, maybe we don't know it about right now. You're right. But we're going to know when he plays in the premium arena. And that might not be something that allows him to win a prize, he or she. Um, does cheat detection happen for all rated games from Chess Society? Someone asked a similar question, which is, do we actually check all, let's say, 5 million games played versus uh, human beings every day? I would say we don't necessarily check the verse computer games, because by definition, it's versus computer. But, um, and, and if you decide you want to do that, you're kind of cheating yourself. It's there for your training. But do we check all 5 million games every day? Within the best of our ability, I can say that that's one of the major investments of the tech, right? The tech is about... You know, it takes T1 analysis that everyone's, you know, self-proclaimed cheat experts are doing on Reddit and everywhere else. Some of them are very good. I'm not trying to make fun. But, you know, it take, I would argue our algorithm goes way beyond that. That's where a lot of the investment goes. But also the investment goes into how do we improve and catch people that are blatantly cheating faster, quicker, better, stronger. We're doing that all the time. Um, we are, I mean, I guess our monthly reports say how many games we're reviewing in a month. So let's see, if we review 94 million in March uh, for, uh, for fair play, clearly, um, okay, what's uh, 5 million times 30? That's 150 million, if I'm doing my math right. So clearly we did not review every game. I, I cannot claim that, but we are reviewing a lot of them. And then uh, we continue to review games, especially as they relate to tournaments and sensitive events um, all the time. So that's, that's the best way I can answer that. Um, Four Pants says... The cheat detection system, do we contact other websites? Because some of my opponents have used other websites at the same time. I, I can't say exactly how well we can track because that would be revealing some of the cool stuff we can do under the hood. We can track very much what's going on on other sites and whether someone is using other sites at any time um, with a separate device or mid-game on the same device, whatever. We can do, we can do that, and we do do that. We do not share uh, what our, our algorithm does with us. It is not like an open source collaboration. We've talked about it a lot. I, I, I don't know that ultimately that's not in Chess.com's future. Um, I can tell you that both Eric and I, the, the current leadership, if, if we are still the leaders at Chess.com in five years, we hope to be, um, that may be something that we consider to make more and more out there. I'll, I'll say this. The reason we don't is not just for like, you know, protecting our investment that we're doing with Chess.com specific events. We do have to make sure our algorithm is as awesome as it can be for our events. We can't always worry about every other site as much as we'd like to. But also, right now, you know, we are not operating in the perfect realm that I would feel comfortable being more public about it because I don't want cheaters to know the very, very few areas that make it harder for us, right? And so um, that's, that's why we don't do that as far as sharing it openly. It's, it's more, and maybe someday, maybe someday we will. Um, you know, um, we want to make sure everyone has safe chess, as they say. We have safe chess coming your way. That's our goal. Was I allowed to make that joke? Maybe that we're going to continue. Okay. EO Ghoul says, does chess.com legit report every single game? So we talked about that. As far as the amount of games, I showed you. We went over 94 million in March. Not all 150 million roughly, but pretty, pretty good. Um, Bradley Bloom says, wants to know, changes in cheat detection will change the number of title players caught. You're darn right it is. And it's unfortunate. How do you know that cheating was getting worse even given the cheat detection method? Was it, that, that cheating was getting worse given the... That's a fair point. Um, I, I wasn't... I'll put it this way. We're offering more opportunities and reasons of motivation to cheat because we're investing more. More people are playing chess online than ever. So I guess by the sheer numbers and some of the sensitive stuff I've gone through this week, frankly, having conversations with people that wouldn't normally cheat. That's why I said and acknowledged you guys. I was pretty nervous to talk about this. Like, it's upsetting. It is. It's, very, it's, it's literally the most difficult part of my job. And I think often and daily about how I could get somebody else to do this. And then ultimately it comes around to, you know, kind of the sensitive nature of it, how much we care and how personal we want to give people time that 
and, and a lot of people do do, I, I, don't, I mean, I don't even handle them. I mean, our cheat detection team does so much more work than I do, and people do handle a lot of sense of conversations. But in terms of some of the big ones that I've had or big closures we've had to make, it's not the fun part of my job. Um, and um, I don't know that it's getting worse. I, I've just had more of those conversations. And the fact that we've made some breakthroughs, you're right. You're right. It, it's, it's, uh, it's something that has us acting uh, very strongly on and being d upset. And that's why we're being more outspoken, because we do want to change the culture. I'm unhappy with the culture as it exists. And we don't want people to think that cheating is, is, is something that they can do and get away with, even for a little bit, let alone you know, for a while. And so um, maybe our algorithm breakthroughs are just something exposing a light that's already been there. Either way, the light is being exposed. So let's hopefully change that behavior. Brandon, Brandon Atterbury uh, asks, as we move into more official rated play occurring online, are we getting, going to get USCF online ratings integrated on profiles? That is a great feature request. I can tell you we're already working on it with FIDE ratings in terms of our player. You ever been to chess.com slash, what is it? Chess.com slash players or something? Can we go there real quick? Let's go to the full screen mode. Doop, doop, do. I don't even know where it's at. Top players. There it is. Top players. Um, you know, we already have profiles that link to everything that is their chess.com, everything profile, uh, but also uh, we're integrating ways that people's standard profile will also be able to be integrated with their FIDE rating and, and be up to date. So it's not just someone comes on and says, hey, I'm 2900 FIDE, bro. Ugh. Right. And we know they're lying. It'll be. A so we're working on that. And why not do it with USCF? So great question, Brandon Atterbury. I will add that to Eric's favorite list. It's called the feature list for 2027 when he gives me everything I want. He never tells me no anymore. He says, Danny, I'll do that. 2027. I hope Eric's listening right now. I speak for the people, Eric. You will give us what we want. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Okay. This is a good question. I'm glad we already shared the full screen. We'll be going back to it. Max M. Linick. Uh, I know you. You're a mod of ours. We love you, man. Can I save OTB classical games on chess.com to make a personal database? Yes, you can. And I'll show you. And this tool is getting better and better. But I'll show you what you can currently do. Um, and uh, when a Live 960 game occurs... Um, what, var what variant statistics would be available? So that's a very good question. Uh, offering game report statistics for any sort of chess variant is like is on that 2027 roadmap. It'll come sooner than that. But we're still trying to make our awesomeness of what key moments can we give you? How can we help you get better with great insights into your games with the game report? Right now, we've got so much attention there. It's hard for me to also say, how can I make someone a better bug house player or chess 960 or anything else? Obviously, on that list, chess 960 comes first. It's the first variant. But it's just it's not something we're doing in this exact moment. Um, let me talk about how you can actually save games over the board. So let's, um, let's go to full screen here. Look at that guy talking on the homepage. We'll get away from that guy. Um, okay, the chess.com analysis. Let's go, let's go to an article. So let's see. We'll grab... Did you know you can grab the PGN and analysis for any article? You just hit this little share button. It's kind of small, but it brings up anything you could ever want. We'll grab the PGN. So here's the deal. The same way you can enter what I'm about to do, which is just copy a PGN and click load, you can also do the same for any manual game, right? When you're done with an analysis, you can make any kind of new analysis, and you can enter moves yourself, right? So you can do enter. You're entering games from your over-the-board event, Right, you're making comments and saying like, you know, I should have not played that, whatever, right? You're done. And when you're done with anything you're either manually entering, copying from somewhere, you can also convert any game you've already played into this. You can save it. And a lot of people don't know, you already have the ability after saving it to see every saved analysis you've ever done. So if you're looking for a list of your, you know, whatever, whatever you want to call it, your collection, your library of things, we already have that. And there's actually some analyses here that I've actually done um, for videos that I did because I use chess.com's analysis tool. Let's see if I can find one. You can see these are videos I've done like for our YouTube channel. What's one with some, okay. So here's one where I, I analyze this. These are all my comments. So this is a saved game, Danny's game. In fact, if I copy this link, I can actually share this game instantly with every member of the world, either on social media or the global chess community. Guess what I just did? I just gave everybody my private analysis on Chess TV right there. 
and you can click that link and go there, right? So a lot of people don't know that. There are other sites that have similar features to this, right? A lot of people don't, it, obviously it's not called the same. We know Lee Chess has studies, Chessable has some great stuff. I know that all kinds of great, Chessbase is really the original, you know, organization and database software that a lot of people use. So if you don't have Chessbase, for my money, it's still the best. I'm maybe not supposed to say that, but it's the truth. Chessbase is awesome. But I can make any analysis I want. I can do whatever I want. I can make any comments I want. I can then save that analysis and then always have it in my saved analysis folder. And we're only gonna continue to work on this and make it even more awesome for you. So if you didn't know that, you can, here's something that's cool, look at this. I can go to my archive. Where's my archive? Oh yeah, it's under play, duh. Okay, I go to my archive. Let's see, I played a horrible game. This Oh, I actually was more accurate than this guy. It does my game report here. I click game report. So I've got this game report. I, I got my own analysis. I wanna analyze, like bishop c4 was dumb. Like, like Danny, like Danny, you're dumb. Danny, you are dumb, bro, right? And then I click update, right? Once I update, I'm saving that analysis. Guess where it's saved? And now do I not only have a link, but if, I, if it's saved, you know, and I can do whatever else I want, right? Make new variations. And whenever I update and save it, it'll be in my saved analysis right there at the top. Guess what I can also do to that? I can edit the analysis and say, stateofchess.com, cheating show where I said things I might regret later. Boom, daddy. Why am I typing? Okay, there you go. Click enter, okay? And I can save anything I want for a future analysis session. So, all right, we'll get out of this now. But again, maybe you didn't know that. And uh, if you didn't, now you know that you can use chess.com's analysis, save anything you're doing, do anything you want. You can share that with anybody if you want. No one can access your saved analysis. That's private. That's like your own little area, right? But if you ever want to share it, you can. Um, and there you go. Hope, uh, hopefully you like that. So, um, okay. Nivon7714 says, will there be an FM not IM speech as champion? We have gotten a lot of requests from National Masters, FIDE Masters, and others who do the same thing. I don't know that's, what, that's something we're going to do. Not because it doesn't sound awesome. And maybe we will do it as like uh, maybe a slightly a community ran event. Uh, maybe, you know, chess.com can provide a prize fund. It's not about the money necessarily. It's just that um, the I'm not a GM thing has actually, has actually been something that was requested secretly for years. It also is a secret excuse to let me lose in front of thousands of people. People love that. Right. And I think that a lot of those IMs are also kind of known as chess personalities. And it's not to say that some of the FMs and NMs aren't known as like more chess commentators or whatever. But the I'm not a GM speeches championship was a little bit of kind of meant to be like failed GMs who like kind of be self like to like to self deprecate, make fun of Lawrence Trent, all that stuff. Right. Everyone loves doing that. So that's what that was about. And a lot of those players are kind of known as faces of commentary. So it's not something we always thought of doing as like a regular event for other levels. Not, I, I don't know yet. Maybe, right? Maybe. We might even do a Potser Speed Chess Championship. If you're a Potser, raise your hand. I'm a Potser. Can I play? Right? Maybe we'll do something like that. Who knows? Uh, we always have lots of fun doing stuff with you guys. So, uh, But there are no plans yet. Chess Sky wants to know, will there be more classical time controls events on chess.com? For those of you who don't know about the Sunway Sitkiss, can we just take a moment to appreciate that? Um, the, uh, the Sunway Sitkiss, which I'm going to pull up real quick in our news. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Here it is. The Sunway Sitkiss was the first ever online classical event. Everyone was proctored. I'm going to be totally honest with you because title players always want to know. And that's the whole, uh, I always say I'm going to be totally honest with you. Why do I even say that? I'm always honest and I shouldn't be saying that. And the problem is that, you know, I'm saying too much. But I'm going to tell you, there were some fair play violations in this event. So you can know you were protected and we closed them. But also, we also went through all the measurements and protocols that I promised we do during this event. Our team worked super hard. Shout out to Simon, who has literally been putting in extra hours to keep, keep our community happy. Um, this event had everyone on Zoom. It was the first ever classical event held with like prizes and things that matter. It was kind of, it was kind of groundbreaking. It wasn't FIDE classical rated. FIDE wouldn't, you know, go for that at this point in time, I don't think. It wasn't USA, but it was a classical event on chess.com. And it was kind of a big deal. And it's still going, I think. I think. Um, anyway. So that's that. Um, chess in black and white. When will there be lessons aimed at 1,800 to 2,200 players? Great question. We are working on it. I would argue there already are some video series that have been converted to lessons. So chess in black and white. I'm not sure you really know that. But, I mean, let me show you real quick. 
in our in our full feature again. Let me just show you our videos. For example, right here, I just clicked on I clicked on Anatoly Karpov's top five moves. Right, this is a video series. Okay, did you know that right on the right here it says it says try the lesson? Any videos you now watch on Chess.com, you can try a lesson, and this this is you is instantly a lesson. Start the challenges. This is a lesson geared at you. I don't even know that I can find the move here. One of five. What did Karpov, what ingenious move did Karpov play to prevent Black from contesting and control the A file? Um, he played this move. I remember this game. Oh, it is I, your old Uncle Sasha. Welcome back. Uh, how should White prepare to double rooks on the A file? Clearly, it's Bishop C2. So, this is a lesson with videos by Simon Williams with with lessons. So chess in black and white, there are lessons that are geared toward you and you should use them and enjoy them. Um, okay. Josh Rod, any plans for another Komodo, Komodo versus human event? In fact, it's already in the works. We just had Komodo versus David Smearden. Komodo versus Alex Lenderman is coming in May. I'm just going to answer it that way because we got a lot of questions here. Already answered that. Any plans for title Tuesday to be 10 rounds again, or even more than that? Yes. Um, there are changes coming to the Title Tuesday format to, again, bigger prizes, um, maybe more rounds, maybe something we learned from the Abu Dhabi Blitz Championship, which was $10,000 for a single-day event, the most we ever had, in terms of the final stages being a knockout. I'm not going to say more about that, but we are working on things for the Title Tuesday. It should make even, even those who are still very critical of our fair play you know, despite my whole message today, not to say that my message should matter, but, you know, we did give you a lot and talk to you about our philosophy in terms of losing some mini PR battles to some of you who think, you know, we're not acting fast enough, but winning the war and continuing to invest and make sure we do catch cheaters. So we're not going to stop. And we think the title Tuesday with some format changes might be even better for some of you that are still critics of fair play and what chess.com does to catch cheaters. So look for that coming soon. Chess TV, are engines allowed to be used for personal friend-to-friend -friend games from Makula G, uh, M-A-C-A-U-L-J? Um, they are not. Now, I will say this. We have had this happen, and in cases where both friends wrote in and both friends appealed and said we were aware of this, we have dealt with them cooperatively to not consider it be cheating. But sometimes this excuse is made, and it's not totally honest. And even if that's the case, it's not something that is necessarily approved. Um, we have talked a lot about creating our own sort of pool of players who want to do that. It's actually called Centaur Chess. If you didn't know, it's actually a thing. And there are some people who are very good at Centaur Chess. There are Centaur Chess world champions, people who play openly me and my favorite engine versus you and your favorite engine. It leads to some fascinating chess. I got to be honest, I'm a fan. Like the Computer Chess Championship, these are brilliant Leela games we're seeing versus Stockfish. Check out my videos on YouTube, shameless plug. Um, some of the computer games, if you dismiss that they draw 75 in a row, they come up with brilliant wins, like that bishop ending, right, that are just like blow all of us away. Uh, but Centaur Chess is also a thing. It is not something we currently openly endorse on Chess.com. We're working on it. Um, Eric has it on his feature list for 2027. Just kidding. It'll be sooner. Steffi94 wants to know what's happening with the Pro Chess League finale. It has been moved to September because of COVID-19. The organizers and sponsors that we have there um, worked with us so that we didn't have to kind of completely cancel it. Um, depending on where the world goes, maybe it would have actually been possible at the end of May. I don't know what's going to happen with COVID-19 like all of you. I, and I think it might just depend on the region you're in. People might start making more individual decisions on that. Um, but we moved it to September anyway. And um, that is when the Pro Chess League Finals will happen live in Oslo. You should be there. It's going to be an amazing chess esports finale. Um, the Beamuth wants to ask, assuming that you have been putting the time to actually improve in chess and thus increase your rating from 12 to 1,500 in the span of 12 months, will your cheating algorithm take into effect that the player could have actually improved his games? So that's a very good question because it leads to one of the most common misper misconceptions. And you're going to love this answer, be a myth. Anyone who cares about our cheat detection, this is going to give you more insight. Our cheat detection is result and rating blind in that, and this, this will be frustrating for people who think of it old school, but then ultimately hopefully illuminating and encouraging because this is why I can claim we don't ever act in a mob mentality. I hate when people come to me and say, this person can't be this good. You don't know. You don't know who the next Magnus Carlsen is. 
People say, like, this person can't improve that or this person could never find that tactic. People play brilliant chess games all the time. Plus, how is it that you can hold it against somebody that by definition of playing a great game, they did match up with an engine a few times, right? It assumes that you believe we're placing labels on people and we're saying this person can't win against this guy. This person's not capable of that. Completely not what we do. Now, when it comes to manual review, there are results that catch your eye. And sure enough, anybody is a human being. And if someone has an outstanding result, we wouldn't be doing our job to protect and serve you if we didn't look into that, right? So certainly results might be a trigger point of why we look into you. But we would never and have never closed. In fact, so many people that have tried to trick us in their, in their confession emails, you just don't know who I am. I've just gone from 12 to 1800 this month. I'm telling you all that stuff. And this is a show of being super direct, so I'm staying with the tone, is total BS. And we know it. It doesn't matter because our, our algorithm is matching up the blueprint of your game to what we have measured and know is possible for human beings to match up with engines in all kinds of ways. And I can't say exactly, there's so many different ways we do that, but it puts together what we call our cheat report. And it takes, it takes top move matchup combined with... Um, what am I allowed to say? Be careful, Danny. I know Roland's watching. Um, it takes top move analysis combined with, obviously, activity of your device, but also it takes the murder weapon really out of it. It's, it's device blind as well because we know, based on our investment, the fact that we have analyzed millions and millions of games. I would tell you this. We knew certain people were cheating in over-the-board events long before FIDE or the USCF did. And you could say, well, why didn't you do something about it? Well, again, remember, that's not really our jurisdiction, right? And when asked privately, we always assist and help. We want safe chess, as I said, practice safe chess. Um, but, but our job is, to, the reason we have nine full-time employees on salary, right, is because, is because their job is to constantly be measuring, inputting data, pulling out information, finding ways that we can see patterns of irregular, irregularity. Um, what the IOC does, it measures not just whether someone has a high uh, you know, white blood cell or oxygen count in their blood, but it also knows what their normal level of blood is. And that's the best I can tell you in terms of what we're doing all the time is investing here for you. And we are not making uh, subjective opinions. And that's where we have to act in a way that is a little bit harder than everyone else who gets to act and just say, this person couldn't do this, or this person's outperforming their rating. Even GMs, it's often wrong. Often people are wrong. And that sometimes people will be surprised that people will be closed for cheating because their result was not as good as you would think. But uh, maybe, they, maybe they're not good at balancing the engine device they're accessing. Maybe they get themselves under time pressure and still lose, right? Our algorithm is measuring what you're doing that is not appropriate in terms of assistance. And it, it, is, not, it is not ever holding results or your chest strength against you. It's one of the biggest illusions. And again, that's one of the things we feel good about. So you can trust we're not going to hold it against you if you have a great event. But if you had a great event and cheated and then try to tell us privately, no, you just don't know how good I am, we're going to see right through it because it's not how we were measuring you anyway. It wasn't about your result. It's about the indications that your moves gave us in terms of what we know is humanly probable for people to do. Not possible, but probable, right? And that's the, that's the way we can act. And, and the best I can describe that is if, if you were in court and you said, I just lifted that 1,300-pound refrigerator with one hand. And a guy's like, no, you didn't. And you're like, yeah, I did. You can't prove I'm wrong. And he's like, well, do it again. And you're like, nope. I can't prove you wrong. And I can't, and you don't have to prove that you can do it again. But guess which one of us wins in a court of law in terms of the way our current legal system works? It's, the reason it's called beyond reasonable doubt is because you're never measuring the impossibility of things. But we do a great job of measuring the improbability. And we do it with integrity because we're constantly measuring the chances we might be wrong, okay? You're not doing statistics with integrity unless you're also keeping yourself in check. So we're not just screaming on a, on, a, on a rooftop or crying wolf when people have great results. If I put this hand super close to the camera, you might say it's a hand. You might say it looks like a baby's butt. You might say it looks like a hamburger bun. It's not until the hand becomes clear that you actually know what you're seeing in statistics, right? You have to have enough information to really understand and measure with integrity. And that's the realm that we operate in. And so the best way to consider it is we're not trying to make false accusations. We're trying to make accusations we can stand by, being conservative, but also protecting all of you. And so 
Without getting into more things, I've probably already said too much that are indicators of the type of statistical methods we use. Some of them are well-known, some of them are not. Some of them are a combination of well-known stuff that people just haven't, other people don't do yet. But that's what we're doing, and we're doing it to measure the probability of, of impossibility. The probability of impossibility never excludes the possibility of an anomaly. I sound like Neo. Man, I'm like the architect in the Matrix or something. Okay, the probability of a possibility never excludes the probability that the possibility could be an anomaly. So there's always the chance of an anomaly, but there isn't the chance that we win in court that, that we would act on it, meaning we would only do it if we know what we're doing and we're measuring, is this a baby's butt? Is this a hand? Is it not? And as soon as we know that's a baby's butt, you can bet that we uh, put some powder on that baby. This, this, uh, this reference got way out of control. Moving on. Um, here we go. Please post the open letter from Smizlov Fan. We will be sending the letter in chess.com messages from yours truly. It's already written. Uh, at Macau Lijay, again, the same guy from Chess TV says, what is chess.com doing about those who are pushy and making a move in under 10 seconds, for example, in chess that are 30 to 60 minutes? I have been having a ton of them online. I'm just a beginner. So, again, there's different... All I can say is there's different feelings on that. Some people really feel that it's unfair to start a game when we should be focused and you're not moving. Some people want you to be aborted in that process. Others want time to think. We're always trying to hear the community and what they want. Different time controls have different restraints of how much leniency we give you. Like if someone hasn't made a move in bullet, I think in like 30 seconds, we consider that half the time control and the game should end, right? In longer games, you're given a lot more time and leniency to think about your first move. In 960 games, you're given more time. That's our job. We're working all the time. I'm sorry if it's not perfect. We, we, we're doing what we can to measure that. Um, I would say that if someone is complaining to you and being rude, Diamond member Macal J, you should report them. You know that you can click on any profile and report that person? Let's show everybody how you do that. Let's show everybody how we report somebody for abuse, huh? Let's do it, huh? We go into live chess, and I click on a game. Hold on. Loading, right? We've got Gavix, and I'm like, hey, Gavix, I don't like the way you're adding here. I click on him and I can click on more or even just the button right there. I can report anybody. I can report them for abuse, for stealing, for che for stalling. Oh, not stalling, not stealing. Yeah, not stealing. <laughs> for stalling. He, he stole my rating points by beating me. <laughs> <laughs> I can report for verbal abuse for, for anything, right? Did you know that you can do that? Again, I'm going to show you again. Click on any username and click the report button and tell us what's bothering you and we will do everything we can to act. So there you go. That's that full screen. On to the next question here. Um... E4, B, a whole bunch of letters, E4, B, C4, Queen, H5, Queen, F7. Oh, that's the form of checkmate. Cool username. Do the monthly reviews consider variance? We do catch people for cheating in variance. People cheat less in variance. The communities are smaller and more loyal. That's just, just so you know, it's true. So if you're a variant player, a little bit of badge of pride for you. People cheat less in variance. One, it's harder to cheat in variance. Also, there aren't as many engines for it. But also, I think the communities are smaller and more tight-knit. Um, we do check for cheating, like four-player chess, as you said. And, and all I can say is, yes, we are, but, um, you know, the, the closures are obviously going to be less extreme. Um, like that number I gave you of 5 million live chess games played every day, that doesn't inc even include four-player four chess variants, right? I don't even know how many four-player four chess variants we've had over the last month and a half. In 2020, the, uh, the second World Teams Championship final four-player chess stream, blah, blah, blah. Oh, okay, blah, blah, okay. Uh, featuring three title players and was won by a team led by Konenko. Four-player chess. Oh, so this is just an advertisement of four-player chess. Apparently, this guy has an agenda. Apparently, check out fourplayerchess.com. I'll, I'll give him his due. Let me just show you. You go under play, and you can go to four-player chess. If you didn't know, I was very addicted to four-player chess for some time. It's a ton of fun. It's awesome. Um, it's also a bit, um, a bit nutty and exhausting, and my brain hurts, and so I stay away from it. Okay. Um, hands, hands pans live as a programmer. How can I apply for the fair play team? You can email, e email, email. I'm talking a lot here. I need to take a breath. It's been an intense show. You can email fairplay at chess.com. I said it correctly. Um, we also have chess.com slash jobs. If you're not aware, we're always hiring. Our company's expanding. We have more than 150 full time employees now. Uh, we provide health care and dental. We, we provide bonuses all around the world to everyone who works there. We, we do everything we can to help our team and our employees be happy. Our, our company is doing what it can. So if you're interested in working for us, we're interested in, in considering you. So go ahead and apply at chess.com slash jobs. How's that for a big chess statement? Good job, Dan. 
BJH says, have you considered adding international variants such as Shogi and Shang-Chi to chess.com? I don't even know what those are, BJH. I love you. Thank you for all the work you've been doing here today. <laughs> uh, no, I'm kidding. I know, I know what uh, Shogi is. Um, no, we have not. I'll let Eric know. That'll be added to the list of 20, 27 along with every other variant that people want and everything else that we want. Um, okay. Danny Wrench, can you please make more live streams of you playing I Like You streaming? Well, I like you, Amazing Master. Thanks for the request. Um, NF Chess 13, is there a chess.com desktop app for Windows on the roadmap? Not currently. Um, I got to be honest, we, we have a very, very small Windows development team that often gets pulled into other areas. The, the Android and iOS market share dominate the market, and I hate to sound like a businessman who has to make sound decisions, but I'm a businessman who has to make sound decisions along with Eric and, and the whole team here. And right now the market share is just not big enough. So if you have a Windows phone, that's awesome. But we just don't have enough people using our site uh, with those apps to justify it right now. So hopefully the web interface is okay with you. Or, um, and I don't, I don't want to encourage you to go iOS or Android because I don't really care. I love, you know, but it's just, it's not something that we're doing right now. And I'm sorry. Um, at Lonigan says, I enjoy watching Daniel Wrench commentating on chess.com and wish, okay, cool. Thank you. Good humor and gameplay. That's just a cool comment. Thank you. Um, that's Lonigan. Appreciate that. Mine SS says, will chess.com make online titles like chess.com master? That is a fantastic question. One that has been long considered, debated, and ultimately sometimes when you don't know what to do, you do nothing, which is obviously why you can see we have not done that yet. There's a lot of different opinions on that. Um, I will share some general opinions we've gotten from a lot of experts of other games and esports communities, and um, you might really like this. So I'll tell you a lot of people. So um, I don't know that we're not going to do it. I don't know that we will do it. Why haven't we done it yet? Well, one of the things that makes chess so uh, amazing is not just that it's a legacy game, been around since 600 AD, but it's also a game that was here way, so obviously the legacy of it and even the hierarchy of it was here way before online chess, right? And when, when FIDE and the, the organizational entities began to establish official rating systems that led to titles, it actually did an amazing thing for chess. That's, you know, I know FIDE takes a lot of heat, as they should, frankly, for some of the things and decisions that are made. But one of the most important functionalities and purposes they serve is, to, is structure and something that people recognize very easily easily and know how good somebody is, not just by their rating, but by their title. In fact, the term grandmaster, right, is instantly associated with chess. And that then it gets used into other genres. Like he's a grandmaster, you know what it means, right? And when someone says you're a master, a chess master, you know instantly what that means. There's no like that guy's a Fortnite master. That guy's a Smash Bros. This. Everybody's like, dude, I'm pretty good at Smash Bros. Like, you want to throw down? Well, I was better at the N64. Like, I like the bigger paddle. Like, the, the GameCube sucked, right? Can we all agree on that? And now, now I play Smash Bros. on the Wii U, or, and I love it. Anyway, wait, 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 wait. So, but here's the thing. According to all of you, you are the best Smash Bros. player in the world. And here's what that's actually led to. I've heard this from all our partners at Twitch and a lot of experts in the eSport industry. That has actually led to utter chaos. Because when you end up going to major events, people don't really know who the best are. They don't. And they don't know that the person claiming it isn't as good as they say they are. Now, streaming has helped some of that because it's provided motivation for people who are good at games to then bring it to the public and get good. It, there has been a sort of an unofficial hierarchy established on Twitch and gameplay of who the best are at things, right? We can all agree on that. But it's not official. Right? A lot of people think Ninja is the best Fortnite player in the world. And then people who know the game know that he's probably not even in the top 20. Right? And, and the thing is, uh, when, so streaming has helped that. The media and the content has helped. But it's still not an official ranking system. You don't know who the best chess players in the world are. You know who the best chess players, oh, sorry, who the best Fortnite players are. You know who the best chess players in the world are? You know who the best chess player is? His name is Magnus Carlsen. Well, you know who the actual best chess movers are? It's actually Leela and Stockfish, right? You know who the, because their ratings are 3,500. So um, the point is this, right? The point is, 
One of the things that is most respected and understood about the game is a very clear ranking and titling system. At Chess.com, we respect and honor that FIDE systems have earned that right. FIDE's rankings and other nationally respected and organized entities have a titling system. And so we acknowledge a candidate master of a given nation or a national master, right? And FIDE has its titles. And we don't necessarily have motivation to undermine it. Despite maybe people's fears or concerns at FIDE or whatever, we have no interest in like becoming the official dumb of chess, right? I mean, we love our site. There are a lot of people who play on chess.com that maybe have never played anywhere else. And that's, and that's awesome. And we're thankful and fortunate. But we're not trying to uproot or undermine the official FIDE ranking systems. And anyone can clip that, please, and send it to FIDE because it's true. Please do. Like, so we honor and acknowledge that rating and titling system. And we don't have interest in undermining it. So to give you a very long-winded answer to the question is, does chess.com have plans for titles? It's a slippery and tricky slope. We've talked about maybe puzzle titles and other things, right? But, but right now, we just want to have a great experience for people to play and learn. And I'm not sure that that's necessary for that. And so that's why we haven't done it yet. I think there's cool motivation. It would be cool to have a chess.com title. That's why, um, that's why M N I N S S asked, right? So I get it. I'm not trying to degrade the answer, right? But that's why we haven't. And it's not as easy as you would think as far as what the real purpose of it is. And there you go. So hopefully that helps. Someone send that, you know, so I don't know. Wait, hold on a second. Oh, Before man. you move on. You, you, you scared gonna... me. I forgot my producer was here. Shout out to Aaron who's helped me with this sweet ass uh, PTI looking setup here. Go ahead. You think you're going to get away with saying the GameCube was a bad system? Wow. Are we really bringing up the GameCube? The most forgotten about game system of all time besides Sega Genesis? Um, no, I'm not a gamer. So do you really like GameCube? Dude, we're going to, we're going to talk about this. Okay, after the I'm, I'm going to be educated later about Nintendo's gaming hierarchy. Um, we have the one now, me and my kids. What's the one where you can take it with you? The Wii? The Switch. The, the Nintendo Switch. Nintendo we Switch. have the Switch right now. You know, you called a controller like a paddle the other day, a right? Pa I, it, I call a, a, uh, a clicker, a remote control channel changer. I don't know. I'm a dad, Oren. Leave me alone. All right, here we go. Um, Sam Copeland, I know that guy, asked, what's your most anticipated feature on the 2027 feature list, Dan? Oh, man. Whew. What has Eric put on the 2027 feature list that, um, that I can even say out loud? Um, I, obviously, that's a joke. Thank you for that. Uh, we're doing everything we can to make everybody happy all the time. It's not that simple. And uh, forgive us. So um, if we're not giving you your features you want right away. At Justin's says, is there a way to make your online games private so they can't be used by other players for preparation? So, good question. Um, currently, no. But if you saw what I showed you earlier, which is chess.com, excuse me, version of, um, you know, saving analysis and organizing your own files, right? I say lead chess studies because people use that as well. A lot of people use our analysis. Um, I know that people create repertoires in chess base. Uh, those are three very common things. The databases in chess base are great. So let's say those are three versions of it. Let me share our screen again and just remind you, this is only going to be getting better and better. But, um, you know, our analysis tool does allow you to save anything you want, um, in analysis, so let's see, Oop, load, oops, well, we'll go here. We'll just save a link that I gave earlier. The analysis I did for a video I did at one time, Magnus Carlson, Wesley So. So in my saved analysis kind of list, I have a lot of things. This is private, and you can do anything you want here. Maybe, maybe you can share it if you want, but you can add any notes to your games and make them private. We have been a, a kind of a proponent of public information in the sense that we believe your game archive is public territory. So anyone can see Danny Wrench's archive, right? If we go to my profile, um, and let's see, like we can go to Hikaru's profile, right? Anyone can see Hikaru's games. If I want, I can see all of Hikaru's recent games, right? Um, I can see that I've actually won 11 times against Hikaru and lost 55 times. Did you know that? Or no, no, I've won 10 times. Okay, good, I didn't even, uh, okay, I didn't even know that, right? Um, so we believe that those who have tried to lock down chess experiences, um, like Aegon, to, to speak of, you know, you know, all the direct things we do on this show. It's what the state of chess.com is all about. Others that have tried to lock down PGNs is not necessarily in the realm that we want to operate in. Public games are public information. Um, and PGNs are portable game notation, and we believe that. And, and now what you do with that game. You add your own thoughts and analysis. Now you've put your own intellectual property into it, right? And that, that canon should only be shared at your discretion. 
I will say this. People have requested a lot, and Justin Z, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. You're probably only asking because you're a serious chess player, so we get that. Um, if people have requested uh, privately, we have, we have allowed title players to have a second anonymous account, a second secret account. Account duplication, multi-accounts is not something we allow on chess.com. It is a version of fair play violation. So that is not me telling you that everyone here can go make a second account. It's not within our rules. But obviously we know that millions of accounts are created every year here on chess.com. Some of them are duplicates. And in order to kind of help the process of title players who do want to play secretly, we have given them usernames they can keep secret until they wish to make it public. Um, now what we've done with those accounts to protect other guys like Hikaru, who he's playing publicly all the time. Hikaru, love him or hate him, has to, has to be, you know, he's a, he's a star and gets criticized and, and, you know, people like and dislike him all the time. But his games are all public. You can see his profile. Hikaru doesn't even have a Smurf or Anonymous account on Chess.com unless he's doing a Bong Cloud speed run. But even then it's public, right? Um, the point is, in the interest of protecting guys like Hikaru, if you have an anonymous titled account, we socially disable that account, meaning it's not allowed to be listed on leaderboards, you're not allowed to compete for certain things, you're certainly not, not allowed to compete in cash prizes. So we try to help people like you, Justin Z, to, to prepare for tournaments, to be a professional aspiring player by giving you that opportunity. It is a special exception made for at, at the request, I guess, of a very serious you know, regular premium member who wasn't titled also wanted a second account and says, hey, I'm not titled yet, but I'm 2000 and I also want it. We might say yes to you too. We're not trying to discriminate against non-titled players, but even then it is a process and people have to ask permission. And if we find people multi-accounting, uh, there, are, there are consequences. And so, it, it, you know, we protect the public title players by, by limiting those accounts, and we do allow you the opportunity to do it if you want. So that's what I can say. Otherwise, we believe in the, the chess is public information, and once you play a game, it should be known to the community. So that's my, that's my statement on that. Um, and my statement now is I am exhausted. We have had a, a, a very long show here, a lot of talking for this guy during the state of chess.com. If you appreciate this, and you happen to have been watching this full show um, in, a, in a VOD later somewhere, please leave a comment. Let us know you appreciate it. If you appreciate it, please, you know, in chat, let us know that, um, that, you, that, you, uh, that you like this show. We're going to obviously we do it four times a year, once a quarter. And partly we only do it that often because it's, you know, it's something we, you know, a lot of energy goes into this. This isn't just commentary, but I'm probably more exhausted now than I have been other shows t discussing very hard hitting topics. So we're going to take a very quick break. When I come back, hopefully um, you guys have shared any final questions you have. We're going to pick a few more final questions. Probably the Chess TV chat gets a little bit of favoritism, but we'll check out YouTube and Twitch too. So if you have any remaining questions, now is your time. Otherwise, final thoughts wrapping up today. When we return, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes.